Welcome to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian. This dose of history explores a topic not commonly thought of when one thinks about the American Civil War. Bulletproof vests. When we think of bulletproof vests, we think of our modern military, but even Civil War soldiers used a crude form of body armor to protect themselves from the risk of musketry. With thousands of soldiers joining the ranks, and especially once the bloodier battles of the war took place, like Shiloh, Antietam, Gettysburg, and Chickamauga, it is no wonder why men bought this protective garment. The casualty list from those battles would make any man joining the army want to protect himself. Entrepreneurs wasted no time capitalizing on this anxiety to make money selling bulletproof vests. One advertisement touted that their garment had been thoroughly tested with rifle fire at 220 yards and that it is simple, light, and is true economy of life it will save thousands. There was a different category of vest for privates and officers with the lower ranks paying $5 and the higher ranks paying $7. Marketer of body armor devised all kinds of inventions said to protect against anything from rifle bullets to bayonets. J.S. Smith of New York invented a type of coat of mail that only weighed three and a half pounds. One Confederate soldier named J. Cable Early saw protective vests after two battles, one taken off a dead Union soldier at First Manassas and another from a dead Union soldier whose arm had been ripped away from the body by artillery fire. The first he could described as a series of metal strips connected together that allowed for flexibility. The other simply as a covering for both the front and the back. After capturing Winchester during Jackson's Valley Campaign in 1862, Stonewall's men found several vests thrown away by the retreating Federals. Another case of vests becoming too cumbersome and weighing down the soldiers was the 14th New Hampshire's men dropping their vests near the White House before moving out for the war. Another Confederate found a bulletproof vest after the Battle of Drainsville, Virginia in 1861. He kept it with him and shot at it often for amusement after the war. The 15th Ohio purchased many of the bulletproof vests as they moved through St. Louis on their way to the Western Theater. One member of the regiment wrote that if the bullet did not go through, it would knock a man into the middle of next week so that he might as well be killed first as last. Some men were concerned about their masculinity when discussing their use of vests. Captain William Vermillion wrote to his wife that, I have a steel armor that covers me quite well. It will resist a rifle shot. I intend to wear it, not through cowardice, but because I consider it my duty to protect myself in every manner possible. However, he asked his wife to keep it a secret, meaning that there was some shame that accompanied the use of such a device. Sergeant Hamlin B. Williams of the 21st Wisconsin kept his secret, securing it in the quartermaster's wagon because it was too heavy for him to carry. At the Battle of Perryville, the wagon could not keep up with the regiment, and Williams entered the battle without his covering and was shot in the back, making him an invalid the rest of his life. There was at least one documented case of a soldier's life being spared by the bulletproof vest, but its overall use can be seen as a failure. One of the best examples of a vest that a person interested can view today is in the Wisconsin v Veterans Museum in Madison. In conclusion, yes, bulletproof vests were used, heavily in some cases, but it was extremely rare for the device to spare the life of the wearer. Thank you for joining me on this adventure, and I'll see you next time.